Hello, Googleization Nation, and welcome to The Whole You, Work, Home, Life, a GGG Unleashed podcast with thought leader Joe Sirio. I'm Ira Wolf. And I'm Jason Cochran. In each of Joe's episodes, he's going to be raw and real with you on what it takes to be the whole you at work, home, and life in order to thrive today and in the future. Let's begin. It's the whole you. Work, home, life. I'm Joe Serio. So great to see you again. We are at the tail end of talking about superpowers. Your first superpower is clarity. Who am I? What do I want? How am I going to get it? And how am I lying to myself? If we can answer those questions as specifically as possible, we'll have the beginnings of a roadmap because we're on a trip, all of us. The question is do you know where you're going? Do you know how you're going to get there? And is the place you're going a place worth going? And if it is, you're going to want to get there as quickly as possible. So who am I? What do I want? How am I going to get there? How am I lying to myself? After we have that in place, we have a much better idea of what to focus on. Superpower number two is focus. The ability to identify and stay concentrated on a specific task project, or goal. Today, we're talking about superpower number three. Superpower number three is consistency. Once we have an idea of what we want and how we're going to get it, once we have an idea of how to focus, when, how to organize our lives, our desks, our resources to go get that thing, the third question is really about how. How do we do it? In what manner? And the manner is consistently. Consistency is a superpower. When I do trainings or keynote addresses, I often play the harmonica, which is surprising to the audience, which is why I do it. And I use the harmonica to illustrate some of the points that I'm making. And what usually happens is somebody comes up at the end of my presentation and they say, I'm learning how to play the harmonica, or I tried to learn how to play the harmonica. And then they tell me how they did it. And how they did it was typically on a Saturday once a month, or they would pick it up once every three months. And of course, in my head, I'm thinking, you will never learn how to play. Let me suggest one approach to work that could change your life and might be a little counterintuitive for you. It is much better to work at 15, 20, or 30 minutes of focused time on a regular basis than to try to cram everything in on one day. The example that I give most often is asking the audience, if I gave you a month to do this report, when would you start? And most of them say around day 29, day 30. And I can guarantee that you will not get as good results as if you did it from day one or even day five a little bit at a time. And I noticed this in my own life because at one point I was in a PhD program. I had a full time job. I was running a magazine and I was teaching classes and I was doing all of that at the same time. And what I realized was if I fed my brain with the ideas that I needed to cover in my paper for a PhD, for example, and then I kept that report or the notes for the report on my screen, but in the background, if I had ideas about that report while I was doing another task. I would just go into that screen and knock out the ideas very quickly and then get back to work. I would work on the paper 15 minutes at a time. And by the time it came to write the paper, all the material was there. I had already been thinking about it for several weeks. Those were the papers that were the best, the best written, the best grades, and felt the best. Because you know, if you don't do things consistently, if you're filled with procrastination, if you have an issue with perfection, then you will drag your feet, you'll increase your stress, you'll do everything at the last minute, and it will not be the product that it could have been. You will say to yourself, I work best under pressure at the last minute. Yes, it's true that you will likely get it done. And it is true that you will ram through everything that needs to be covered. But the product will be very different 
than the one that you would get if you started on day one or day five, day six. Think about this. If I'm a supervisor and I give a task to my people and they have a month to do it, and someone comes to me at day 15 and says, here's my draft report. Can you look it over and tell me what you see? Tell me what you think. Tell me what needs to be changed. That person now has two weeks to go back and fix. The person who gives me the report when it's due and started it two days before missed out on feedback. They missed out on exploring new ideas. They missed out on performing at a higher level. When it comes time for promotion, who do you think I'm going to promote? I'm going to promote the person who started early, who came to me to consult for feedback on day 15, and very likely the person who did it at the last moment will complain and protest that they are more talented and more uh, equipped to get the promotion than the other person. It's not how it shows up in real life. Consistently, little by little, the Chinese say a trip of 10,000 miles begins with the first step. That's all we do. This whole thing is step by step by step, which is why clarity and focus becomes so important. Because if we know what we need to do and we can do it consistently, the whole undertaking becomes easier. I'm not saying it won't be a challenge. I'm not saying there won't be difficulty. But the process becomes easier because we're clear and we're moving. Think about the workplace when it comes to consistent follow-up. In my experience, one of the things that can torpedo morale of an organization is failure of supervisors to follow up. They might be on the phone or they might be walking around the floor. They have a quick meeting with one of their colleagues, one of their reports, and they say, yes, I'll take a look. I'll look into that. And as they move through the room, move down the hallway, they run into somebody else and they make promises to that person. They've already forgotten about the first person. They haven't written it down. They haven't captured it in their phone. They haven't put on their calendar a day, a specific day to get back to the person that they said they would follow up with. What happens? The person waiting for the supervisor to come back with a follow up gets disgruntled. And if it happens more than once, which it usually does, they start talking to their colleagues and saying, oh, that one never follows up. Oh, that one, that supervisor, he doesn't even care about us. He tells us all the time he'll follow up, I'll get back to you, and then never does. What happens to morale? That employee will start walking around and complaining and then say something like, the morale around here is terrible. The morale around here is terrible. And they will say it to anybody who will listen. And the people who listen say, oh, you know what? I didn't even think about the morale around here being terrible. Now you've given me permission to think about how bad the morale is here. The morale indeed begins to collapse. Consistently follow up with your people. Another huge area is change. People are afraid of change. Ask them. They will tell you every time. People are afraid of change. What happens most often in organizations is that change is not communicated often enough or clearly enough so that the fear that employees have is not tamped down. It's not mitigated. People run around worrying about, will I be able to handle the change? What's coming? We don't know. No one's told us anything. But if you can consistently prepare people for the change that's coming, you'll have a different outcome and a different effect. I saw this in people that were my favorite mentors. And the, I saw this illustrated by two leaders that I worked under who were my favorites. One was the former head of the Texas prison system. He came to the university to work. And the thing about him was you could never tell if he was especially happy or especially upset. He was very steady. In other words, he showed up with consistent attitude and consistent behavior. He was great to work with. The second one was a man named Gennady Chepaturyov. Gennady was the deputy chief of organized crime control for the entire Soviet Union. 
He was my supervisor when I worked at Soviet National Police and had a chance to sit in his office as much as I wanted to. And I would observe him interact with his people, interact with his colleagues, interact with his political enemies. And I even on occasion watched him interact with underworld godfathers. And there was one commonality among all these people. They all respected him. Why? Because he was consistent in his behavior. He was consistent in how he showed up. He was consistent in how he treated people. So what are you doing with your time? How are you showing up with people around you? Are you following up? Are you erratic or are you steady like my two mentors? What does consistency look like in your life? And one way to check is, am I making progress? Am I making sufficient progress on the task in front of me at work or at home? That's superpower number three, consistency. So you have three superpowers, clarity, focus, and consistency. Put them all together. Re-examine your situation at work and at home. And I guarantee you that your outcomes will change. Your productivity will improve and increase. You'll feel better. This is the whole you, work, home, life. I'm Joe Serio. We'll see you next time. That's it for today's episode. Thank you for tuning in and digging deep into what's ahead for your future as the whole you. We'll be back next month with Joe for another episode. But until then, please visit his website for additional information at joesirio.com. And remember, don't let the shift hit your plans.